This is CBSSports.com's Pro Football 360. We are keeping an eye on pro football with our NFL insiders. Dane Brugler joining us once again. He is our NFL draft expert on the program, and he is helping us look forward to the mock draft. Of course, we're all anticipating the upcoming NFL draft, even though the season is winding down, and Dane knows where all the guys are either going to go or likely will go. Uh, let me begin by asking you, my friend, about the quarterback position. People still talking a lot about Geno Smith and why not a fantastic statistical year. But it's Matt Barkley that I think has a lot of people surprised, Dane. Listen, here's a guy who a lot of people felt like would come back, have a triumphant senior season, a la Andrew Luck, and instead he seems to be cascading downward. Tell me about that. Right. Entering the season, Matt Barkley seemed to be the consensus number one prospect, lauded to be the top pick, but in his senior season just hasn't gone quite according to plan. And a large reason why we had Barkley as the number one prospect entering the year at NFL Draft Scout and CBS Sports was assuming he progressed from his junior year and take another step forward. But unfortunately for him, it really hasn't been the case. Um, the, the average size, arm strength, athleticism, it's all the same as before, but he's making more mistakes than a year ago. Uh, he has twice as many interceptions this year from his junior year. Uh, just not enough big plays downfield, even with a great wide receiver duo at his disposal. Uh, you know, right now the only quarterback in my first-round mock is Geno Smith. Uh, he hasn't been the most consistent. But he has the tools that NFL, te NFL teams seek, um, similar to Ryan Tannehill last year. Production was inconsistent in college, but the tools are there. Uh, yeah, a lot's going to change between now and April, but you know, right now, Geno is the only quarterback I feel confident about in the top 32 picks. You know, Barkley still has a chance to convince scouts he has first-round value, but uh, the injury to his shoulder certainly won't help if it keeps him out of a bowl game or you know, maybe even the senior bowl, so we'll see about that. But it's unlikely that only one quarterback will be drafted in the first round. It hasn't happened since, I believe, 2001. That was the year Michael Vick was drafted number one overall. But it's more likely that a team trades back into the back half of round one to take a Matt Barkley or a Tyler Wilson uh, rather than them being overdrafted in the top ten. And Of course, that's not even mentioning the underclassmen like Tyler Bray or Logan Thomas who you know, could declare early. Dane Brugler is our NFL Drafts scouting expert, and he joins us once again here on Pro Football 360. Let me ask you about our risers and fallers. I know that you have a couple of FSU guys on the list. Now, every now and again, you figure that the underclassmen will get the early buzz, and then the senior will come on. You've got it flipped for us. Tell me about that. Right. Yeah, the Seminoles have arguably the best defensive end duo in the nation. And, you know, last week, both Bjorn Warner a junior, and Tank Carradine, a senior, appeared in my first-round mock draft. Uh, on Saturday against the Gators, Werner was outstanding. He had three-and-a-half sacks, fumble recovery, you know, showing why he's currently among my top five overall picks in the mock draft. Uh, it's hard not to see flashes of uh, you know, Rams defensive end Chris Long while watching Werner, who's a German exchange student and still learning the game after picking up football just five years ago. So you know, his 13 sacks on the season are tied with uh, South Carolina's Javion Clowney for tops in the nation. Uh, but on the other side, Tank Carradine, he's been a more than adequate replacement to Brandon Jenkins, who was injured in the season opener. But, you know, Carradine, he was finishing up an outstanding senior year, had 11 sacks this season, really worked himself into that first-round discussion. But against Florida, he suffered a torn ACL in his right knee on a non-contact play late in the fourth quarter. Just a devastating twist to a great story. And you know, every player responds differently to these knee injuries, so it would be unfair to speculate on his draft value right now, especially because the injury will likely keep him out of all pre-draft workouts. But as long as the rehab goes well between now and April, the team could get a steal with him in the middle round. But, you know, unfortunately for him, his dream of going in the first round is likely over. Yeah, and that's a real bad break, uh, no pun intended, for Caradon because he has been a tremendous player for the Seminoles, and certainly he's demonstrated that out on the field. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe one of the uh, more successful teams in the NFL decide to take a gamble on him, maybe late first or, as you point out, sometime later in the uh, second or even lower round. Meanwhile, uh, you know, everybody talks about Kenyon Barnett when we talk about the top running backs, but you're telling me as I look at your notes here, Dane, that there may be another running back that people aren't talking as much about that just might make some noise come draft day. Right, and he gets overlooked on the West Coast, and he plays in a lower conference, but Fresno State running back Robbie Rouse is moving up draft boards, and he, he could surprise as a top 100 pick in April. At, at 5'7", 190, doesn't look impressive, but his game tape is a different story. Uh, he does a great job using his size to his advantage to hide behind blockers, loading up field. 
a uh, very good plant and go explosion. He uses his hips and his footwork to quickly change directions, wiggle out of tackle attempts. Uh, he's the school's all time leading rusher, and he already has nine 100 yard rushing performances this season. I think there is a question about wear and tear. Yeah, durability. Uh, he has over a thousand career touches in college, but he plays tough, hasn't shown signs of wearing down yet. And I talked to a West Coast scout last week about Rouse, and he likes him more than. Um, other Pac-12 backs, including Ken John Barner. So, based on the game film, you know, I'd likely uh, agree with him. And so, this this draft class lacks that true first-round running back like Trent Richardson last year. But there are about a dozen backs who will be drafted in that second and the fourth round range, and Rouse is one of them. Let me ask you about his uh, pass catching ability. I saw him earlier this season, and I thought he had not only nifty speed and and excellent grace in space, but I think he can actually catch the football. What do you think about that? Absolutely, and that's, that's really where he shows up. You know, uh, teams always look for, when they're looking at running back, they always look for, can he catch the ball out of the backfield, and can he stay at home and uh, block and pass protection? And Rouse can do both. You know, he's not the biggest, but he does gives up his body in pass pro. And as a receiver, he has over 100 career receptions. So, you know, he, he'll definitely pass the test in both areas. There you go. And that's what a lot of scouts will be looking for, in particular as we begin to sort of morph what we're seeing in college. Now at the pro level, you're going to see a lot more four and five wides. A guy like that might be very useful out on the field. All right, uh, Dane Brugler is our NFL draft expert. He is also always joining us here on CBSSports.com's Pro Football 360. Before we wrap up the segment, I want to show the folks at home the uh, latest draft board vis-a-vis -vis our top ten picks. And, you know, I love the way you see your top 10 going. I don't see an argument anywhere. I do have a couple of questions I'd like to throw out your way. You have Manti Teo going number eight to Detroit. I'd like you to sort of tell me about that. And you have Geno Smith going number one to the Chiefs. And I guess my obvious question for you there is, is he really what the Chiefs need, seeing as how maybe he's not a franchise-type quarterback? I don't see him as an RG3-type quarterback. Is that the right call if you're the Chiefs? Right, and that's going to be the big question is, you know, none of these quarterbacks are really Andrew Luck, RG3 quality. So that's going to be the big question, uh, especially for the Chiefs, if they have that number one overall pick. You know, the quarterback is arguably their, you know, most glaring weakness, their most their biggest need. So it basically comes down to does their brain trust, their scouts, uh, their general manager, Scott Pioli, do they fall in love with a quarterback? Is it, will it be Geno Smith? Will it be another quarterback? Because they need to come out of this draft class with a quarterback, but will it be with that number one overall pick? That is the big question right now. So, you know, right now we have Geno Smith number one overall. A lot could change in the next few months. It basically comes down to do the Chiefs fall in love with, with that pick. Um, and then with the Lions uh, slotting Teo right to, the, to Detroit right now, I, a lot's going on with Sue right now and yeah. his, his, him getting fined today. Uh, a lot of other questions of, about leadership on our defense. How about adding Manti Teo to that mix? You know, outstanding leader, an emotional guy who's going to, you know, rally the troops. Why not add a guy like that in the middle of the defense to kind of, you know, help the help the locker room presence, help help everyone on the field? I think he he'll do a good job of making everyone else better on that defense. That is a look at the NFL mock draft as seen by Dane Brugler, our NFL draft expert. Always great stuff. He mentioned Ndamukong Sue picking up that fine, $30,000 fined by the NFL for that kick on Matt Schaub, a kick that Sue says was not on purpose. Great stuff as always, Dane. We appreciate it. Dane Brugler joining us once again here on Pro Football 360. And a reminder, you can read his great stuff at our website. And speaking of, we are all over the web. We've got a great presence on Facebook and on Twitter. Our handle there is I on NFL. This is Pro Football 360. We're with you Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. This is CBS Sports, home of Super Bowl 47.